Magnus Carlsen called this a perfect game. During the commentary with Jan Gustafsson and Lawrence Trent. Let's check out this perfect game together. For the last few moves the B4 pawn was under attack. White now puts a permanent stop to that with C5. Complete lockdown, complete domination. 26-10 versus 25-93. The game began E4, E5. Knight F3, Knight C6, Bishop B5. We have a Spanish. But what variation will Safali go for? A6, Bishop A4, Knight F6, Castle, Bishop to E7, Rook E1, B5, Bishop B3, D6, C3, Castle, H3. A closed variation, but which one? Knight B8, the Breyer system. Carlsen has used the Breyer many times, as you can see. He has beaten three top players with this opening and has had many draws with black. Many good results for Magnus. Knight b8, d4, knight bd7, knight bd2, bishop b7, putting pressure on e4. Black will play rook e8 to put further pressure, bishop c2. White defends it straight away, rook e8, knight f1, bishop f8. Black is ready to take on d4 with e d4. This forces white to play knight g3. Perhaps heading to f5 later, black puts a stop to that with g6, planning bishop g7 to Fianchetto, both bishops, a4. This is typical in the Spanish to question how valid is black's queenside expansion. Bishop g7, bishop d3, questioning this expansion once again. c6, temporarily blocking the bishop in. Black plans to play c5 to free his b7 bishop in the future. White plays bishop g5, h6, bishop e3. White has created a target on h6. Queen c7, connecting the rooks and maybe black will play rook c8 or d8. Queen d2, king h7, getting the time back, b4. Queenside expansion. Black now plays knight b6 and white very quickly takes over. What else was possible? Rook a d8, perhaps planning knight f8, or striking in the center with d5. A good move here is queen c2, getting off the d-file. Now let's consider two options. d5, breaking the center open, so then the rook on d8 now makes sense, or knight f8. Let's look at knight f8 first. Planning to go knight e6, putting pressure on d4. White can now play c4. Why is the one making things happen? It is difficult for me to play an opening like the Breyer because I'm waiting for a pawn break that suits me. White has too many possibilities. If b takes c4, queen takes c4, knight e6, take, take, rook c1, and there's queenside pressure. b5 is a threat, the bishop on d3. If it looks a bit loose, it can go back to f1. After c4, maybe black can take straight away. And after bishop takes d4, knight e6. But there is pressure on the c file beginning with c takes b5. If knight takes d4, which doesn't work out, knight d4. C file pressure is still there. Knight d7 just doesn't work because knight takes c6. A lot of things are hanging for both sides. If bishop takes a1, knight takes d8. Queens are hanging if the queens come off. Both black bishops are under attack. If you move the bishop, you can still attack it with rook e3. After queen c2, let's look at the other option, which would have been better than the game. d5, striking in the center. Knight takes e5 is possible. Knight takes, d takes, and now d takes e4. There's no time to take on f6 because e takes d3. So knight takes e4, take, take, bishop takes e5. It looks like black has freed his position, and he has. This is a lot better than the real game. But after a5, white is slightly better because of the very important b6 square. White will play bishop b6. Then the rooks can come to the center. This bishop is so useful, putting pressure on this diagonal. If need be, maybe white can just tuck it back. White has a nice spatial advantage. Back to the game after b4, black played knight b6, giving white a vital tempo which leads to a spatial advantage. 
If you are enjoying the video so far, why not subscribe to the channel and hit that bell to get notified each time I release a new video. Back to the game. White opens up the center with d takes e5. d takes e5. a5, knight bd7, c4. Rook d8, queen a2. Just like in the above variation, white chooses to get out of the way, but to the a2 square instead of c2. King g8 played, but what else was possible? Knight c5 attacking d3. Using the rook on d8, but white can calmly get out of the way with bishop c2. If knight d3, white uses this chance to play a tempo move. Let's put the bishop on b6 where it belongs. Queen has to move. Notice the yellow pieces are being attacked. The rook on e1 is attacked, so let's defend the b4 pawn with rook b1. Black now moves the rook, keeping it on the d-file, and now queen b3 attacking this knight on d3. It is not trapped. The knight can go back to f4, and now white can go rook d1. A bit of clever maneuvering in this variation, which is similar to the game. If you go king g8, queen a2, and this is why very similar to the game. We will see this variation shortly. Bishop c2, a nice way to reroute to put pressure on f7. Queen d6, 32 minutes. Using the queen to protect f7, but what else was possible? Maybe rook e7. It's not a great idea to use a queen to protect a pawn, so maybe rook e7 is another choice. But white has a nice way to continue. Let's open the file with c takes b5. Take, knight h4. And there are so many ideas for white. Bishop comes to b3, the rooks can go to c1 or d1. Knight takes g6 is also a threat at the moment. It would be nice if this pawn was back on h7, so then it is protecting g6. After knight h4, king h7, rook a c1 planning bishop b3 if you get out of the way. Bishop b3 anyway, and now f3. Because e4 was under attack for one move. After f3, the knight on h4 is not in any danger. The knight can go to f5 to sacrifice itself, which is a typical idea in the Spanish. Back to the game, queen d6 played. Bishop b3, there's no need to protect b4. Queen e7 played. What happens if queen takes b4? c5 is a nice move, trapping the queen. Also, bishop takes f7, check is threatened. If you go knight takes e5, you can take with check, and then rook b1, and the black queen is in trouble. If you play queen a4, queen e2, the queen is trapped. After queen c3, you can play rook c1, and c5 drops. Queen e7 played. Rook d1. Rook c8, knight h4, threatening, c takes b5, and knight takes g6. Black moves the king, and for the last few moves, the b4 pawn was under attack. White now puts a permanent stop to that with c5. Complete lockdown, complete domination. The black bishop on b7 does not exist. The d6 square belongs to white. White has ideas of playing either knight to f5. A piece can drop onto d6. This is total domination. Knight b8, rook d6. White does not need to rush. Put a rook on d6 first and then maybe sacrifice somewhere, either on g6 or f5. Rook d8. Now white goes in for the sack. Knight f5. Knight sack, take, take. All the yellow squares are all the pieces that are being attacked. The queen, the bishop, the knight will be attacked. h6 pawn will drop. f7 will drop. A positional masterpiece of a game. Queen c7, knight takes g7. King takes g7. White is a piece down, but there's no need to think of it like this. This bishop does not exist. Continue the attack. f6 and h6 are being attacked. So let's crash through with bishop takes h6 check. Sarin goes for a double minor piece sacrifice to lure the king out. King takes, rook takes f6 check. King g5, rook f5 check, king h6. The rook and the bishop are in the attack, so let's get another piece in as well. Bring in the queen. 
The queen can come to e2, and black resigned. Let's take a look at two variations. If rook f8, defending f7, queen g4, and that's it. Rook h5 is mate, and you cannot stop it. If rook g8, controlling squares on the g file, not to worry, queen h5 check does it. Because after king g7, you could play rook e3, or if you're a human being, you can just take on f7 and grab the army. Rook takes f7, check, take, check. The king can move, and you can just take the piece on b7. A fantastic attacking game by Sarin. Check out one of my videos over here, and check out another video over here. Subscribe to the channel and hit that bell to get notified each time I release a new video.